This video provides an overview of the Global Network's ultrasound training course. It is intended to provide an orientation for the course as well as a resource for later review. The two-week ultrasound course covers how to assess pregnancies that need to be delivered in a hospital versus those that you can manage in your local health center. You will also learn to identify conditions that you may not find on a physical exam alone. Ultrasound measurements are important to all aspects of your work, and they will be covered in more detail during the live training. Knowing how to make ultrasound measurements and assessing patients will make labor and delivery safer for the mother and the baby. Let's begin by taking a look at the ultrasound machine and how ultrasound works. The probe, or transducer, of the ultrasound machine sends out high-frequency sound waves. This is what produces an image on the ultrasound screen. The sound waves are beyond hearing range of the human ear and are completely safe. The sound waves we speak and hear are of a much lower frequency. It is important to know that ultrasound machines have been used in antenatal care for many, many years and have proven to do no harm to the baby or the mother. In addition to performing an ultrasound, you will also need to take good care of the ultrasound machine. This is essential for the machine to function properly. It includes making sure the transducer is well cared for, is the probe surface clean? Is the cord out of the way so that it does not get pulled or tripped over? Also, make sure the machine is always plugged in to power while power is available. Check the memory on the ultrasound machine to make sure you will have enough storage to save your exams for the upcoming day. Before the patients arrive each day, you should make sure there is a clean sheet on the bed and that you have enough clean linens for the day. Also make sure to empty the garbage. Before you start your ultrasound, you must enter the patient's information into the ultrasound machine. This includes patient's name, age, LMP, or last menstrual period, and patient ID number. It is common for the patient to not know the answer to some of these questions. This is okay. Simply leave the space blank and move on to the next question. Ask the patient how her pregnancy is going. Any pain or bleeding? What number pregnancy is this? Does she have any concerns about this pregnancy? At this point, it is important to tell the patient that you will not be able to tell her the gender of the baby. There are no exceptions to this rule. You will then have the patient lie down on the bed to perform the ultrasound. Make sure to use linens or napkins to protect the patient's clothing from the gel. It is important to take care of the patient while performing the ultrasound exam. Sometimes the patient starts to feel faint from lying on her back for so long. You may notice the patient start to move around as if she is trying to get comfortable. She may not tell you she is starting to feel faint, so it is up to you to ask the patient how she feels. If she says she doesn't feel well, then have her roll onto her side. This should make her feel better right away. You may continue to scan the patient while she is lying on her side. After a few minutes, you may have her lie on her back again so that you can complete the exam. Next, let's see how to start your robust ultrasound exam. Robust stands for Rapid Obstetric Ultrasound Survey. The robust scan is the first step in performing a screening ultrasound exam. Before you begin, always make sure your patient is comfortable and explain the procedure and its safety. The robust scan is a simple but very important technique. With this technique, you can assess fetal position, placental location, and the number of fetuses quickly and clearly. Here you can see the robust technique being utilized. It includes three upward sweeps across the abdomen from bottom to top, followed by three sweeps across the abdomen from right to left. These sweeps across the abdomen will help you quickly determine the fetal position, the placental location, 
and if there is more than one fetus present. The gestational age and weight of the fetus are determined by four separate measurements. Together these measurements are called the biometry. The biometry is made up of the BPD, or biparietal diameter, which is the head's diameter, the HC, or head circumference, the AC, or abdominal circumference, and the FL, or femur length. When you scan the fetus to measure the biometry, it is important to get the best picture you can before measuring. The time spent getting a good picture will increase the accuracy of your measurements. First, find a good place to measure the BPD and HC. Both can be measured in the same image. The BPD measures the width of the head. You can see that the caliper is placed outside the bone for the first measurement and inside the bone on the second. Once you have measured the BPD, you will next measure the HC on the same image. Place the circumference on the outside of the skin. Important landmarks that you should see are the thalamus, which is heart-shaped, and the CSP. After getting accurate measurements, store the image on the ultrasound machine. Next, move on to measure the fetal abdomen. Important landmarks that you should see when measuring the AC are the umbilical vein and the stomach. Here, you can see that the circumference is on the outside of the skin. Once you have the best possible measurement of the abdomen, store the image. Finally, the femur is measured. Make sure you have the correct bone before you freeze and store your image. The humerus, the upper arm bone, looks just like the femur. Once you know you are looking at the femur, try to orient the femur perpendicular to the transducer. Place the calipers on the outside of the bone to measure the entire length. Don't worry if this is confusing. You will have practice opportunities during the live training sessions. At this point, you have already determined the fetal position, placental location, and growth of the fetus. The last thing you will need to do is measure the amniotic fluid around the fetus. The AFI, or amniotic fluid index, is a tool that will help you determine if the fetus is healthy or not. If the AFI is too low, you may need to send the patient to the hospital for care. Here are the four components or quadrants of the AFI being measured. The first is the left upper quadrant, or LUQ. Next, we will move to the left lower quadrant, LLQ. Third, the right upper quadrant, RUQ. And finally, the right lower quadrant, RLQ. It is important to always measure each quadrant in the same way. If you do not, then you will not get an accurate AFI. After you have measured each quadrant and saved each image on the ultrasound machine, you will see an AFI value automatically calculated. An AFI less than 8 centimeters can indicate problems. You will learn which problems you can follow locally and which problems you will need to refer to the local hospital. In this case, the AFI value is 11.8 centimeters. This is normal. You have now completed the ultrasound screening exam. With the screening exam completed, you will know fetal position, fetal number, placental location, amniotic fluid volume, and the gestational age. We will spend much time in the course going over indications for hospital referral. Once you have completed your ultrasound, have the patient sit up. 
Next, you will need to record the patient's ultrasound results. After you have completed the patient's records, you should explain the results of the ultrasound. For instance, by knowing the placental location, you can tell if there is placenta previa or not. If there is, you should send the patient to the hospital for delivery. Also, you will know if the growth of the fetus is normal. After the patient leaves, you will need to complete the report. And last, clean up the transducer and straighten out the sheet on the bed for the next patient. This video is a short overview of the ultrasound training. We understand OB ultrasounds may be new to you. The course includes a lot of new words as well as instruction on using the ultrasound machine and most importantly, demonstrations of how to do an ultrasound exam. We know this will take some practice. The live training provides enough time to scan patients so that you will feel comfortable doing an ultrasound exam. If you have time before the course begins, you may want to look over the word list and other training materials. This will make it easier to understand the lectures. It is important to ask questions during the lecture so you understand everything. It is also important to take notes during the lectures so you can review them later. Most important, we want to make sure you are prepared to take care of your patients. We also hope you are comfortable with your new skills and enjoy scanning.